Welcome to an all-new collection expansion extravaganza right here on ToyWorldOrder.com. Starting me to fall and my wife, Karen Duvall. Hi. Yay. What you all don't know is the first episode we've actually recorded in months. Yeah, probably three or four months or so. Mm, lots of stuff. So, to, lots of stuff yeah. to look at that's been building. Yeah. Why don't we start with, what, what do you got over there? Uh, I've got a few things. Yeah, what do you got? Why don't you show them off here? Ah. Uh, These the, little guys. The vintage ideal... Alvin and the Chipmunks, uh, mini stuffed characters. These are from, I know they were 80s. They were 80, 87 is when these came out. So around the, around the time that these and then all of the, the little posable stuff from Ideal came out. Uh, we found these at... Uh, we found these at a flea market. At a flea market. I think they were $15. Yep, for okay. the set. So, and Carrie was like, can I get them? Because they're pretty darn cute. So, yeah. uh, we have... Uh, oh. And then we found these at that same flea market, I yep, believe. Yep, we did. And Maybe. these, um, these I'm pretty sure were sold uh, in a set. Like these are preschool toys. They're they're just soft rubber. Um, they don't squeak, but they are they're soft rubber, and they're you know little kids could chew on them if they wanted. But they're just like cute little plastic uh, representations of Mickey, Minnie, and Pluto. Yeah. So I'm not sure what year these were. These had to have been um, late '90s, 2000s, probably for this type of. Oh. Um, for this type of little collectible, but something cute that Carrie can add to her Disney. I think collection. the lady had a dollar piece on them. So yeah, so we bought all three. Why not? Well, yeah, we can't have Minnie without Mickey. That's true. These things are kind of neat. These are from the Marks Company, and the Marks did a lot of Disney stuff uh, in the '60s and '70s. Uh, and I don't remember what these are called, but basically, you would put them together. You would buy them. You would put them together, um, as they all have like their limbs could just pop on. They were all put together by pegs and stuff um, and they're poseable so they, they do move like Geppetto here moves moves at the waist his head bobs and his, his left and right arms can move up and down um, I don't remember what they, if these were called these were called puppet somethings I think um, and I don't remember what the exact name of them was um, choo choo yep so we found Geppetto from Pinocchio and then one of the characters from um, oh the Donald Duck movie um, oh my god what is the name of that film it escapes me right now as always, people, we do not do research before we push play. We do sometimes. It's just Jason forgets things. Uh, but these were cool. These were in a box. Uh, we found these at the... Yeah, um, these were in like a box underneath the table. And it, I, I felt like these should have been like on a table, not like in a box. Because they're very kind of flimsy. Yeah, they are. They're very, very flimsy. These were the only two he had. I mean, there was some paint wear they're on neat. them and such. But they yeah. were really cool. Something we didn't have from Disney at all that, that were just really neat. So... Um, and again, they're just, they're really kind of cool little, uh, they made a whole bunch of these. I remember we looked them up when we first bought them, and I looked it up, and there's a whole series of these things. So, there are a bunch of them, but they're cool to have. They're really cool. And the third co-host will be joining us. He's over here whining to me, so. Grab him. Okay, hold on, I gotta grab him. Come here, butthole. hold. Our honorary oh. host, he's down there crying. Come here. Mm -hmm. Say hi to the people. Say hi. Say hi, everybody. Thanks for thinking of me and praying for me. Yeah, as you all know, our, our poor little puppy Chase here is getting older, and he's he's had some health issues and some health, some health scares, and uh, uh, we thought we were going to lose him uh, in October of, of 2014. We thought, you know, his end was near, Hi. but he's, uh, we're recording this now uh, a day short of December, so he's still here He's still here and hanging out he with us. He still wants so. to be famous and yep. have his 15 minutes, Yeah, he still, still wants to hang out with Mommy Jason while they record, uh -huh. huh? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. We tried to make him uh, as happy and as comfortable as possibly can be. So yeah, we brought his bed and blankets and everything down here. He didn't want anything to do with those. He wants to sit with us. So. Yeah. So okay. we we love the little butthole. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some uh, some records and stuff. Actually, we have some uh, a puzzle. 
couple, a couple two of puzzles. two puzzles here that are kind of neat. These are uh, there, there's a few different puzzles, but these are kind of cool. These were Disney movie classics uh, by J. Marr. Uh, these would have been released. Oh god, I don't know when these, these were. Super old. They are super old, and they're a little warped. It yeah, looks like they got a little wet. Um, you have to be careful. This this scene is one from Pinocchio. This inlaid tray puzzle, and the other one is from Snow White. So these are really cool, and these had to have been. These are probably. I don't think J. Marr makes stuff anymore, so these would have had to have been uh, with the, the old Disney logo, probably the 70s, um, at the the earliest, possibly, of these. But the, we found these at... Um, um, I don't remember. We might have found these <laughs> on the uh, Spoon River Drive that happens every October, or somewhere around there. That, I remember we found these at, at just some weird table, and we were like, oh, what are these? And I think they were like... They weren't more than like a dollar a piece. So we bought them both. And we don't usually buy puzzles, but when we find old puzzles like these, we, we yeah. usually try to pick them up. So, And then the other puzzle I have is, is kind of cool. Um, we've shown off in both Flea Market Finds and Collection Expansion, actually, a couple of these stuffed animals without their little headdresses. But there was a line of uh, Hallmark cards made a line of characters named Pretenders. And basically, the storyline went that they were a bunch of cats that lived in an adoption agency uh, in, in, you know, in a kennel. Um, and no one ever wanted to adopt the cats. They always wanted to adopt doggies or birdies or bunnies. Uh, so the cats had the bright idea to start disguising themselves with masks as other animals. And lo and behold, they got adopted. And then the kids found out what they were, but they wanted That's to keep them anyway because they were pretty cute. But uh, I found this little 63-piece puzzle of the Pretenders, which is pretty cute, which kind of shows you, uh, gives you the main idea of, of them as they're, they're making disguises and making a duck bill to disguise them as a duck and little duck feet like and stuff a, so a toucan or something yeah the toucan and a mouse and a bunny mm -hmm. and, and a disc he can't disguise himself as a doggy um it was pretty cute it was a cute little line it didn't last long but that's pretty adorable though a nice little puzzle and uh we did uh, i believe this uh yeah we i was usually if i if i find them in their bag like this more than likely they are complete and i think i put this one together and it was complete so pretty cool we've got uh got a couple of uh, little book items here which are kind of cool uh this one is a uh is one of those uh, cardboard kind of hardback covers, kids' books from '83 for the Shirt Tales, and this one does uh, "We Have Fun All Year Long" uh, of the uh, the Shirt Tales, and of course it's uh, it's basically summer through winter of, of their adventures, uh, which is kind of cool. Shirt Tales were uh, is something that we, whenever we find something Shirt Tales, I tend to buy it because we don't see Shirt Tales stuff very often at all. Mm -hmm. So even though this is a little beat up uh, book wise, it's still a nice book. It's got a little wet uh, water damage back there, but. Um, these little cardboard uh, books seem to, they tend to hold up pretty well these days. So they're, they're, they stay together pretty good. Uh, this one was kind of cute too. Carrie actually found this. That, and was, it was, that was super old. And it, it's so old. We found this at the, uh, at the um, yeah, this would have been 75 is when this was printed. Uh, we found this at uh, the Goodwill Outlet store. And this is uh, Ernie the Cave King and Sherlock the Smart Person in the Invention of Paper. Um, a little... Uh, Little Sesame Street Tell a Tale book, um, which is kind of cute, and the uh, the the graphics in here. Uh, I don't know who did this artwork, but it's it's pretty mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing. It's it's really cool stuff. And this book's a little beat up. It's it's a little a little rough around the edges, but uh, to find this in a Goodwill outlet, just in a box, you know, big outlet tub full of books, and Carrie's digging through and finds this Sesame Street book was well, pretty neat. It's a pretty cool little old book. And then this one actually, um, I want to say this is something, this and the next thing is something Brent Scarano sent me. Um, I, I can't remember actually, but it's been a while. Let's show you how long we've recorded this. Um, this was a, a Lace Ups Muppet Babies book. Um, originally yarn was included, but, oh no, we found this at Goodwill. No, we found this at Goodwill. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I found this at Goodwill. <laughs> I had to think there for a second. Sorry, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but the cool thing is, is like it has these little uh, these little scenes, these little uh, lace-up scenes that you can pull out, but it also comes with these little lace-up accessories. So you could put the helmet on Kermit or, you know, the mermaid tail on the swimming piggy. But there was a bunch of, like, you know, there, it's mostly Kermit and piggy scenes, but there was a little there was a little picture of animal on the flag back here for the pirates. And so, of course, Carrie went, oh, my gear I get to have yet. So uh, this was pretty cute. 1992 is when, uh, when this was out. That was pretty cool. Uh, and then this is neat. This is actually a packaged uh, Series 2 Masters of the Universe Puffy Stickers. Um, these were cool. These were from 84. Uh, but there's just some great designs of these old Puffy Stickers with He-Man, He-Man and Battle Cat, the logo, Evil Land, Grayskull, uh, Skeletor, and Manny Faces there. Those are pretty neat. But to find them still uh, still packaged was, uh, was pretty cool. You don't find them very often still packaged. So that was a nice little find. 
They got some records here, which are pretty cool. Uh, this one, uh, I think we all found all of these. Um, would have been the the one of these. This one, the Popeyes favorites, was at the Goodwill outlet, um, and the record is still still in here and still in pretty good shape. Uh, but it's uh, basically this this has uh, Jack Mercer as Popeye, so it was one of the original Popeye voices. Uh, but this one has a, bit, a babysitter Popeye, Popeye the Cowboy, Popeye and the Man from Mars, and then side two has Popeye the Skin Diver, Popeye goes to the jungle, and Popeye flies a rocket. And they were just uh, little uh, little stories there with uh, Jack Mercer's Popeye and May Castell as uh, olive oil there. So a uh, cute little uh, Popeye's Favorite Stories record, which is kind of neat. I love old character records like that when we can find them. And, and the, the, we have the, another Popeye one. Yeah, and the covers are a little beat up, but the record, as long as they're not scratched horribly, I'm okay with them. And then we found a couple of Muppet Show. We found the the Muppet Show soundtrack here, uh, which uh, is pretty cool. It's it's just a, just a collection of the music from the Muppet Show. Uh, side one, of course, uh, with voices by Frank Oz, Jerry Nelson, Richard Hunt, Dave, Gale uh, Dave Gales, uh, Jim Henson, Eric Oscar, uh, John Lovelady, and Fred Brill. And side one is the uh, the Muppet Show theme, Mississippi Mud, ma uh, ma -na -ma -na. Do, 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 do. Uh, The Great Gonzo Eats a Rubber Tire to Fly to the Bumblebee, uh, Mr. Baseman, uh, Cottlestone Pie, The Amazing Marvel and Suggs, and his Muppaphone play Lady of Spain, Lydia the Tattooed Lady, uh, halfway down the stairs, which is a beautiful, beautiful song uh, that Jerry Nelson performed as Robin, as uh, just, a, just a beautiful song. Uh, side two is Tenderly, uh, I'm in Love with a Big Blue Frog, Titwillow, uh, Veterinarian's Hospital, uh, Simon Smith and His Amazing Dancing Bear, with uh, which is another great number by Scooter and Fozzie, uh, What Now My Love, Monologues by Fozzie Bear, uh, Trees, Sax and Violence, and Being Green. Uh, so a great collection of Muppet Show tunes from the first couple seasons of the original Muppet Show. That's beautiful, beautiful artwork. And then the other one I found was the uh, the Muppet Movie soundtrack on LP. And again, the cover's seen better days, but this is a great, uh, great, neat, great, it opens up, great gatefold it's... opens up there to show you some pictures from the film and a little bit of information. Um, and of course the record again is, uh, again, when I find them and they're still in like their slip covers, and the records themselves aren't horribly... Uh, horribly beat up. This one actually is in really good condition. Uh, I pick them up no matter what the sleeves look like because uh, eventually one day... We do not own a record player as of right now. Eventually one day I will get a record player that can record to mp3 just so I can listen to them because those seem to be the, the record players that are uh, the most affordable these days. Which is weird that you know records of course have come back since their demise in the 80s and now it's a big thing again because the quality of the records is so good. Uh, I've got some action figures here. A couple of action figures here, since there's not a whole lot up her. Yeah, yeah we'll do these. Uh, I found a couple of Ninja Turtles. I don't collect vintage Ninja Turtles a whole lot, but uh, these uh, were some of the ones I kept from a large collection of figures we bought at an estate sale um, that I have sold quite a few of since then. But I kept uh, a few bits and pieces here from them, just uh, figures that I liked that I had as a kid that I didn't have. But uh, a Raphael who has one of his size. Um, and that's that's all he had. But he had his belt, so I, I kept the Raphael, which is pretty cool. And he's he's a little his head's a little sticky. He's got animal hair stuck to his head. Eel. Go figure. Yeah, go figure, right? So I kept a kept a vintage Raphael. It's a hard head. They made hard head. The soft heads were the first release, and they were squishy. And then the hard heads were later on. And this is a hard head rough. But thank you I, for educating. Yeah, you're welcome. I kept I kept Raphael. And then I kept a Slash, who uh, not complete. I think he's missing a weapon still. But where uh, would he hold it? Well, he's got a little little oh. slot back here on his belt, but. Uh, I found a pretty pretty complete Slash who is in good condition. A little paint wear on his back and his belt, but I always liked Slash. Slash was always a favorite uh, character of mine from the Vintage line. I always thought it was a neat-looking uh, Ninja Turtle character. So there was a couple couple of Vintage Turtles I, I kept. Uh, a Vintage Master figure that I didn't have uh, came out of that same lot, which you'll see a lot of uh, certain figures from that lot that I kept of stuff that I didn't have. But uh, a Vintage Moss Man, who I had as a kid, who um, he's one of the ones that... Uh, I've been fixing my vintage figures. I basically cut the rubber band and redo the bands in their legs to, to tighten their legs so they stand better because this one's got really wobbly legs. But uh, I kept Moss Man. He was the best Moss Man I found. There were a couple of them in there, but he's got a couple spots that are worn. But um, he was probably the best example out of all the Moss Men that were in there because there were several of them and they were pretty beat up and one was really nasty looking. But uh, I kept Moss Man. I had Moss Man as a kid. He was always one of my favorites. Still kind of smells like pine. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. yeah. Can still smell pine on him, which uh, he smelled like pine, and Stinkor smelled like patchouli, which uh, which is a fragrance. Um, and he that was that was Stinkor's smell. So no, it's kind of. What do you mean? 
Patchouli. Basically, what happened was they. No, went, but what is it? Um, well, Patchouli. It's, it's hard to explain what that smells like. Is it bad? No, it's oh, just okay. it's strong. You you no, recognize no. you're like. It sounds wow. like food. Kind of, yeah, it does sound like food, but it's not. Okay. But uh, vintage moss man, no weapon, but all he had was a little brown club, so um, not not that concerned about it. But he's still his waist action still he can still punch, so that's kind of cool. I found this really cool posable pound puppy. Um, not based on any of the characters from the cartoon show, but more based on the classic Pound Puppies uh, characters that you could buy, you know, before the cartoon came out. Um, and this just looks like one of the, the regular Pound Puppies, but he posable legs there, posable head, so he can look left and right. So you can kind of you can pose him so he can he can stand up on his back legs and beg, and you know he can he can lay down. Um, just a cute little thing. He can sit. You can have him sit, which is pretty neat. Um, just a little item. I don't collect a lot of, uh, you know. Pal puppy stuff, but we found this, and I thought, well, he's a dime. I should probably buy him. There's no sense in leaving him in there. <sighs> yeah, no. Why would we do that? Well, exactly. He's got to have a home, right? Burf. Except he Burf. doesn't. Burf. Well, he will in a little bit. He will after this is recorded. Uh, this is kind of cool. I kept this. This came out of, uh, I think we found this at a flea market, and he was just like a random character. But uh, what is this, it? Was, this was a line called Arco the Lost World, and it was... It was a budget line Spirit. that you could buy in supermarkets, basically. Arco did a lot of those types of lines. And he had a shield, and I believe he had a sword that he held. Um, but they were just these little rubber bendable characters. Um, I had this character as a kid, and I had another one as a kid, too. But they, they did a lot. And these actually were really sought out by collectors, these kind of knockoff, uh, of, you know, affordable toys from the 80s. Um, these are these are sought, off, sought after by collectors, and this was... One of those weird lines that people now are Was looking for. Is he supposed for. to hold, be holding something? He's or? supposed to be holding a shield, which my buddy Brad Raider has an extra shield he's sending me. Oops. Yep, because I sent Brad a bunch of stuff, so he's uh, he's sending me some uh, accessories as he finds them. And a sword. He was supposed to hold, I believe, a sword or a mace. But the little little Arco Lost World character there is pretty cool. And then this item, before we get to the board games, is really neat. Um, I love real Ghostbusters stuff, and every time I find uh, an item... Uh, that I don't have, I try to pick it up if it's complete. And this was. I remember when we bought this, the guy didn't even know what it was. Yeah, the guy didn't know what it was, and it was a buck. So I bought it. But it's. Uh, he asked you, he was like, what is this thing? Yeah. So you started explaining. I told him, I was like, well, it's a real Ghostbusters you story. Well, what you should have said was, I don't know. <laughs> I know, it just looks cool. I just kind of wanted it. Yeah, because um, maybe it's, he would have given it to you for a quarter. It's the real Ghostbusters. I believe his name is Tongue Lasher. But basically, he looks like this. And then he's got a, a little tail feature, and by pressing down on the tail, you unlock it. And then pressing forward. There's another ghost inside, so he would, he would, a figure would, you could walk a figure on here and arr, he basically would eat the figure, kind of. Uh, but it's a neat little, uh, okay, Jason, we get it. <laughs> it's a neat real Ghostbusters toy, and I actually like that you can lock the tail back there behind it so he won't, he won't come open prematurely. So you've got this, this great little, uh, display piece, which is kind of cool. And the last but not least for this episode, of course, is uh, is board games as usual. We uh, we have a couple board games which are kind of neat. Uh, this one, <laughs> I can't wait to, for you guys to. Play I this. can't either. This is going to be a ridiculous game. But we found this uh, Breaker 19, the CB Trucker game. This was brought out uh, probably in the uh, was this the late uh, late seventies? Yeah, it would have been the late seventies. Um, and it's uh, basically the CB Trucker game, and it's uh, challenge yourself to, buy, to drive the big rigs and be the first to make your payment on your rig uh, for two to three uh, or four players. Uh, the board on this is really cool because and, and it's never been used. Yeah, it's, it's never, never been, been like the it's all the money and stuff has been kind of thrown in here, but the trucks have never been punched out of their little board. So and it was complete, so that's why I think it was like a couple bucks. But I love the uh, I love the the board for this game because it's it's just this gorgeous like late 70s uh <laughs> beautiful stuff and the fact that there's a little insert in here that has a glossary of commonly used cb terms because in the late 70s cb radio was a huge Let me thing see. oh my gosh so back door is a vehicle following behind you uh base rig is a cb transceiver at home uh let's see uh bear cave is a police station a bear in the air is a police with helicopter bear taking pictures is a police radar uh, bodacious is good signal or clear transmission. Uh, Breaker 19, breaking on channel 19. <laughs> Fluff stuff with snow. Uh, Four-legged go-go dancers is a load of pigs or hogs. Beautiful stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, I know that one. 10-4. 10-4. That's the only one I know. Uh, put the good numbers on you. Best regards. <laughs> 
Beautiful stuff. As and well I like the signal list, too. Yep. It tells you what. Like, yep. 1017 is en route, and 1018 is urgent, so. 1034. Does the game require you to say some of these, or is it just for fun? I think it's just for fun. I don't know if it actually requires I you to. I hope you guys say a bunch of them. Oh, I'm sure we will. Uh, but Breaker 19, the CB Trucker game, is a, is a, was a neat item that Carrie and I both found, and Carrie was like, you have got like, to buy that. That's ridiculous. And then, again, we talked about Shirt Tales earlier in this episode, and I found a uh, Shirt Tales. Again, I love 3D board games. I love board games with 3D elements. I think they're fascinating. To even to this day, they still fascinate the heck out of me. But I found this awesome uh, Shirt Tales game uh, that's got a colorful three-dimensional board game. Uh, it's got uh, Shirt Tales pawns and a bunch of uh, bunch of great stuff to it. So uh, that's pretty cool. The be the first player to collect four shirt tokens and climb the oak tree. So and Shirt Tales, of course, took part uh, took place in uh, Central Park, I believe, uh, technically. So they they all lived in this oak tree and they they went to you know. They, they raced to save people from the oak tree. So, pretty neat. Neat, neat little collection yeah. stuff there for you. So, there you go, guys. Right. That'll, that'll wrap up this episode That's of Collection Expansion. Episode. I know. A lot, lot to talk about there. <gasps> that'll wrap up this episode of Collection Expansion Extravaganza. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Toy World Order. Hit the subscribe button. As well as check out Board the Show on YouTube.com slash Board the Show. Uh, where you'll see all the shenanigans and the upcoming seasons of Board uh, as we complete them. So, you can also find us on ToyWorldOrder.com where you can hear Damon DeWall's Toys and Collectibles as well as our podcast, uh, usually in the spring and summer, married to the collection when Carrie and I can get out of the house and, and venture as the Illinois weathers are, the winters are a little cold. So we, uh, we tend to be hermits during the winter time. But uh, check us out there. And gang, until next time, uh, keep digging because you never quite know what you're going to find. Take care. Blah. 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 <laughs> Take care, guys.